In order for one to begin to understand fight plans, one has to build up an understanding of their own psychology, their physical abilities, some of the conceptual ideas on strategy, and the initiative types that are used in fighting. In order to evolve into a good martial artist, one has to understand these concepts and know how to use them. Stay tuned. We'll talk about it. Welcome to Shihan's Dojo. I'm Shihan Marty Husband, and I'm here today to help you build your skills and knowledge in the martial arts. This particular series will go on for several months trying to teach you the different aspects you needed in developing your own fight plans. We will lay out what we need to know and understand for our own personal fighting systems and then go from there in understanding all the different aspects and conglomerating them into your own personal fight plan. First of all, we have to understand the direct relationship between strategy, tactics, and techniques. These three items have been previously mentioned in other videos. However, I want to start breaking them down so you can utilize them when you're developing your fight plans and lead up to an understanding of what our psychological strategies are so we can employ them in a way we can understand. To be good at fighting, whether it's for sport or self-defense, one really has to understand each of these groupings in order to be exploited, fully developed, and implemented into what you're trying to do. Great athletes and martial artists often collect data on how to improve their abilities, consider different situations, and to help continue to build their skills. I think one of the most studied fighters of all time has probably been Miyamoto Musashi. His book of Five Rings does elaborate what he had broken down through the years in all his years of sword fighting. In this, he was able to help and create his own system. He understood what was indicative of the nature in fighting, and he was able to utilize his own fight plan to totally destroy his enemy by understanding his enemy. This can be easily employed even in whatever fighting system you're doing, whether it's empty hand to weapons. We shall go over Masashi and his ideals in greater detail in another video, but I, I would suggest you go out there and buy yourself a book on that, and also I would suggest Sun Tzu's Art of War. They're really good books, hard to take on Sun Tzu sometimes, but I think you will get a lot of information if you've never read them before. Both of them are highly informative and help you to understand and correlate any strategy, tactics, or design that you might need in a fight situation. But now we have to focus in on what your goal is by studying and developing each of these strategies as we work along. It's like I've said before, if you play chess, you know always are thinking two to three moves ahead. It's the same way in a good fight. You are always thinking two to three steps ahead, so you have to set up your strategy in order to get into your opponent or defend yourself depending on what you're doing. The first thing you'll want to consider is your long-term goals. Is this for sport? Is this for self-defense? Is it for both? If we're doing it for survival, we have to break down the possibilities of a fight situation and how it could be handled. Sport, we have to figure out the combinations, the rules, the understanding of what can be done and what can't be done. Unfortunately, in sports, the rules are limited. Self-defense are not. There's no way to truly understand what a person is going to attack with or win until you've seen him fight for a little bit. Now, in a self-defense situation, you don't have that opportunity, so you don't know what is coming from that person. Therefore, when we're breaking down our strategy, we have to accept the different techniques and ideas of other fighters and the common possibilities of how to handle these techniques. I know I've mentioned this many times, but I think Patrick McCarthy did a really great list when he broke down the Okinawan fight patterns for Kata. This list of 36 is very important for people out there, and I think there are bigger items in that that need to be addressed for modern day. However, it is quite complete for pugilistic types of fighting systems. I hope sometime we can share and fundamentally go through each of those types of HAPV processes at some point and see how we can use or employ them. We also have to make sure we're not dealing with a limited mindset. That's what it means by taking your strategy and looking several steps ahead. I think sometimes the mindset of people becomes so closed because they only learn one or two ways to handle a technique, and when they do and find it doesn't work, they're lost. It could be deadly or detrimental if you're trying to fight. Strategy still comes down to one important detail. It's problem solving. You have to understand how these techniques are being used, modified, then how to alleviate or defend against these attacks. 
Now, many styles teach different things like one-time sparring or how to roll on the ground and how, how to handle it there. Sometimes a single idea is all they teach, and this has got to be changed in order for somebody to realize that if you're fighting somebody bigger or smaller, you, you might have to handle the situations differently. It's great for the very foundation of starting out with a strategy, but you have to evolve those strategies in order for people to really have a concept of how to handle situations if the other person knows that defense and how to counter it. This, of course, I've covered in other videos, and I'll leave a link up, up top here so you can go out and watch them if you'd like. Strategy itself is built up one or more tactics in general. Tactics themselves provide us a way to possibly lead our opponent to where we want them to take advantage of the situation. These situations are not always by choice, but it's the best options we can have at the time. Like chess, you might use a pawn or some other piece in order to be able to open up the opponent and attack a king. In this case, it's the target you're trying to get to. These small-scale actions are what inevitably allow us to win the game or survive the fight. These little bitty actions are stacked up or built to subvert the action and the opponent's strategy and be specific where we want to go. Let's just revert it a little bit and break it down further here. As we know, when someone's attacking, we need to work to get the best advantage possible in order to control that situation. We have to understand the tactical advantages of using things like evasion, deception, diversion, flanking, flight, attack, all of these. And in doing so, we can't always rely just on these physical techniques we've been learning or training with. As we know, any technique can be from punching, kicking, headbutts, you name it. They're all out there. There's millions of different ways to use a technique. However, they are very structured in what a human body can do. This becomes the very essence of our tactics and how we formulate our plans and see how these tactics can be employed to get to the strategical goal of where we want to control the fight. In order to get to that point, you have to understand the details behind it in order to improve and become better. We also have to be aware of the psychological approach of how a fighter or you fight in order to correlate what actions they might take to defend themselves. Just because you have a strategy, they do too. It's important that you interrupt their tactics in order to destroy their strategy. We have to really understand the psychological approach of defeating our opponent. This can be done many ways by overpowering them with our fighting or appealing to their egos in order to implement our tactics. Now once we've accrued all this information, about ourselves, we know what type of fighter we are. We can then break down these different studies and books that we talked about to understand the psychological differences that some fighters have. We'll cover that in another video. It is quite a big undertaking, and trying to summarize it will take a little bit of effort on my part. We also need to understand the initiatives that were done, say like from Musashi's books, and the initiatives like Bruce Lee used to do. And we'll, we'll talk about those in different areas and in general too. I am hoping that in doing this, you can bring together all these different ideas on strategy, tactics, initiative, and infuse them into your own fighting system to help you develop your own fight plans. Now there's a lot more information, and this is just a basic intro to fight plans themselves. There are many other different aspects we'll try to bring into these videos so you can see it. And after we've done them over the next few months, that we will try to then bring this information together to help you infuse these ideals into your own fighting systems that you might be able to develop your own fight plan in the future. I believe there are a lot of good strategy books out there and a lot of things other fighters can teach you that they've done over the years. And I think it's important we utilize any information you get, not just what I'm telling you. So if you like this video, press like down there and tell your friends about it. And if you haven't subscribed already, go down there, hit the subscribe button and punch the bell so we can notify you when we have a new video coming along. And I'd love to hear your ideas about setting up fight plans, things you would like to see incorporated into this video that you might question or want to know about. Good luck in your training and we hope to see you again here on Shihan's Dojo.